Oh, okay, some of you may be worried about the uh, phase relationship that I've uh, shown from uh, the uh, <laughs> my instantiation of the Rosemary Ainsley circuit using IRF 830A MOSFETs in all five positions using a lot of extra wire. This here, these two items are my internal board load and they're not in the circuit. I've switched them out of the circuit with this switch. The only load we've got is the this load, that heating element, that water heater element that I've got in there in uh, 300 milliliters of mineral oil with a thermometer and a vent and <clears throat> all anyway. Anyway, that's the load. Uh, okay, so uh, top trace is the function generator output, bottom trace is the MOSFET common drains, right, on the on the transistor side of the load. Okay. And uh, so I've got the, uh, the channels turned off. The function generator channel is set to 2 volts per division. Divisions there, 1, 2 per division. And the other channel is set to 5 volts per division, but I'm using an attenuated 10, 10x attenuated probe, so that means there's 50 volts per division. And there's where your zero volt lines are on those two traces. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn them on. Both of them DC coupled. You can see a little signal coming from the function generator there. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn up the function generator. I have it set for all negative going pulses. So now we'll turn up the amplitude of the function generator. And there's your oscillations. Okay massive oscillations on the gate uh, function generator gate drive signal and also on the MOSFET drains and you can see that that's sitting up there at battery voltage plus whatever is being added by the function generator <laughs> in those phases All right, but look the phase relationship is wrong right that's uh, now I've explained before that that's an, uh, an artifact that is an effect of the way this oscilloscope triggers and does its uh, its beams. This is not a two beam oscilloscope. It's got a single beam in there, a single electron gun, and it's swapping back and forth to paint the channels. Okay, see down here where it says display alt. So we're triggering on the A channel, not the B channel, that would be down here, and we're displaying the the traces alternately. Okay. Now that causes the triggers between the time synchrony between the two traces if you're triggering on one of the traces to maybe be a little weird. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. Um, this is the function generators. Oh, by the way, we're at 300 hertz right now. So the the function generator frequency control. So that's what I'm going to do here is vary the function generator frequency control. And I think you can see that the phase, the relative phase, varies apparently. It's not really varying, but because of the way the scope handles triggering and painting the traces, it looks like it's varying, and I can basically put it wherever I want to. All right, we'll put it back where it was to get a fairly stable trigger. Now, the scope, or rather the function generator, has a sync output and the scope has an external trigger input. Oh, well, okay. So let's just take the sync output from the function generator and plug it into the external trigger input and then we'll switch this switch here from internal to external. And now we'll change the, we'll vary the, tweak the trigger setting a little bit. Okay, now you see since we're not triggering on either one of these traces, but rather we're triggering on the function generator's output directly, you can see that the phase relationship is rock solid in phase, and if I vary the frequency a little bit, they stay in lockstep. All right, so that should handle any questions that you might have about the phase relationship between my oscillations coming off of this thing and the phase relationships that Rosemary Ainsley has shown coming off of her thing, right? Alright, thanks for watching.